Aloha and welcome to Ed the Dread Story Time. What? Where I tell you stories that seem like they could be made up from a dream world in another dimension, but they happen to me. <laughs> yeah, this one we're going to call Story Time. I got arrested, comma, for helping someone, period, then taken to county jail, dot, 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 and strip searched, exclamation point, maybe. What's up, you guys? Man, I love y'all. Thank you. This happened back in 2007? Is that a year? Yeah, 2007, 2007. Um, I'm actually getting over to the post office because I have to send a letter in response to a letter that they have sent me two times. This one, which says, you may be entitled to receive money from a clash action settlement if you are admitted to the Ocean County Correctional Facility for a non-indictable offense and were strip searched upon arrival. We write to remind you that if you want to receive any money from the settlement, you must submit the claim form on or before February 1st, 2019. So, since they sent this to me twice, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing in the mail because I'm trying to get paid for this ridiculousness. So, what happened was, myself and two homies, pow pow, unnamed, but if you know me and know them, then you know who they are. We all go down to Seaside Heights, New Jersey, all right? Famous for having the train wreck that was the Jersey Shore television show film there. Um, and the three of us all went to Monmouth University, famous for having the person who produced the train wreck of a television show there, learning to do that at the film department at school. Damn. What a crazy tie. Anyway, so we go down there on July 4th, you know? My dad's birthday, uh, birthday of this nation. My grand birthday, because you know, if your parents, parents are your grandparents and they birth your parents and your parents birth you, then your grand birthday is your parents' birthday. So pff, logic, flawless, thank you. Um, so on my grand birthday, we go down to Seaside Heights, Club Bamboo. Me and psh, these two guys, and, uh, you know, we're out having a good one, hitting the scene, dancing, having, having a drink, whatever, you know, standard living your life routine. And this guy sees a woman who he knows who is completely out of it. Looks like she may be drugged. Uh, doesn't recognize him, doesn't recognize anybody, eyes rolling in the back of her head type deal. So, you know, us being three gentlemen, we take her outside, get her onto the bench at the bus stop, and then we call the police and ask them to bring an ambulance. When the police show up, they look at me and this guy, and they say, yeah, y'all gotta leave here. And we're like, uh, excuse us? We called you guys. And they're like, nope, the two of you have to leave. And we're just like, mm, I don't think we're gonna leave. Like, we don't. I don't even know where I am. Like, never been on this street before. Came with him, that guy. And still, no, you guys gotta leave. So this guy, he goes, oh yeah, man, I'm not leaving, whatever. And they just immediately, boom, boom, grab him up, grab his thumbs, throw him up on the wall. And I'm like, oh man, that's crazy. So then I turn around, I'm like, what are you guys doing to my friend? Bow, 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 same thing to me. Thumbs up, bow, arms all jacked up, face on the wall. Then some cop that's across the street sounds like an echo from another time. Hey, why aren't they locked up yet? And then the next thing you know, ting ting, here we are in freaking handcuffs. Thrown into the paddy wagon. Nuts. So, you know, they didn't read us our rights. They didn't tell us anything, literally. They just threw us in the freaking paddy wagon. And then I have my pocket in my phone. So I know it's my dad's birthday. I know he's gonna be real pissed and would probably rather hear this now than later on. Uh, so I reach in my, in, I reach in my pocket, pull my phone out, call my pops. He's on speakerphone. I'm talking to him. I'm like, yeah, pops, uh, I'm getting arrested for I don't even know. And then the cop opens up the door and he's like, what are you doing talking on the phone? You're not supposed to be talking on the phone. I'm like, bro, you're not supposed to, be, supposed to be arresting people that are helping people. But you put me in here with my phone in my pocket, which I didn't say, but I thought in my head, um, which counts for something, I guess. But anyway, so. 
we go to a holding cell and there we're spent overnight the cops tell us okay look man you know in the morning we're gonna let everybody out when the sun comes up so this guy he's locked in a cell with a dude who just pees on the floor um, I'm locked in a cell with a guy that goes hey bro check it I'm gonna get out of here I go what the hell what's he think he's about to do and then he goes ah, ah I'm taking a bunch of prescription drugs I feel like I'm gonna die and then they came and let him out but then 15 minutes later he was back and I was like so what happened with that and they're like oh you know if you, if you tell him you're gonna die because you took prescription drugs they gotta like take you out and check on you but then they had to put him back in so I'm in the cell with this nut job all night when the Sun comes up in the morning they do just like in a movie just dra drag the thing that and like everybody's like okay we're up what are we talking about they open up the thing, okay, everybody get in line. Oh, sick, what are we getting in line to get our discharge papers? Yeah, no, you're getting in line to go in that bus. And outside is a big old bus, taking us to county jail. What? I'm telling you, county jail. So, <laughs> on that bus ride, I had a few choice words to the little tiny crack of a window to the cops that were up there because I didn't even know what my charges were. When we got out, they had their flashlights raised like they were gonna beat my head in for the stuff that I was saying to them. And then I was like, oh, I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm a chill, I'm a chill. Um, and when I finally actually got to look and look at the uh, writing on the paper, when they handed it to the person that processed us in county, it said, impeding EMS service, which the charge on that paper in there said disorderly conduct. I don't even know what, I don't even care. But regardless, you know, person lines me up, we give him the paper, they go, okay, guy, get in the next line, so you're in a line, and they give you this freaking brown jumpsuit, and then, and then, if you're a real nice guy, what they do is they make you get completely naked, and then they cut off all your bracelets, and all your necklaces, and they take pictures of you, and then they ask you what all your tattoos are about. That's if you're a nice guy. So, I wonder what they do to the horrible guys. Man. But anyway, I digress because I'm driving to the post office. Um, I'm in county jail with like the bullpen full of mopes, bro. Like 60 dudes in a, in a cell. They're bringing in trays of crap food and like trying to make somebody bring all the trays back. And it's like, bro, I've seen the movies. Like you're not about, don't be the guy that takes all the trays back. Cause then I don't know what could go down. Maybe something more than your fruit being taken from your tray. But I didn't even touch the food, all right? That stuff was nasty, and I wasn't even vegan back then. So, how I got out is even crazier because you can't call a cell phone from the prison landline. So, I had to call a friend's parents who had to call my parents who had to bail me out while they were on vacation at the beach for my dad's birthday heavy then oh there's more so then when I get out I get a lawyer you know I go to this lawyer I'm like yo bro check it I'm pressing charges on this one like there's no way these cats are getting away with this one and he's like uh you know dude you probably don't want to do that because at this rate the amount of people that Ocean County treats like crap and uh, opens cases on them you're you're probably gonna be waiting 12 years before anything ever even happens. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm not then. And that was that. Now, that was 2007. So, 2019, freaking 12 years later, here I am, sending a letter in. This thing, but you gotta go get a stamp and mail it on off. This thing, I'm sending so that I can get between three and $500 because it's like a $2.3 million freaking case, but the two people that open the charges get like 20 Gs each, and then the lawyers probably get like, I don't know, 800,000 each, and then the rest of us mopes, 7,000 plus people who they freaking strip searched, get to divide the rest amongst ourselves if we write back in the proper time frame. So. I'm going to give me some money for getting strip searched and taking pictures of, and I ain't even get paid 
before, but now I'm getting paid now, baby. That was like a job. It was a contracted job 12 years ago. I never got paid for. Uh, uh, well, that's the way you got to look at it because the reality of it is if you change the way you look at things, you change the things you see, baby. So, pfft. I'm on. Bless you guys for listening. Hey, if you like that or thought it was completely insane or crazy or whatever, uh, just share it. You know what I'm saying? Because Ocean County needs to be called out. That's New Jersey. Um, and also, you know, the more that we get dialogue like this from people that this has happened to, the more that we can all see, you know, kind of more what it feels like to walk in another person's shoes from maybe a different culture or a different demographic in the American society. Uh, aloha guys I love you and gals thank you mahalo nui loa for watching All right. until next time that I have a crazy story which won't be too long ah! ahui ho